One of the most fundamental concepts in all of chemistry is the concept of the mole. And it's appropriate that we're talking about that very first here in unit one of AP Chemistry. The SI unit of substance is the mole. And when we use that term, we're talking about a very large number of objects. That number, as you might read, is 600 to sextillion. Of course, it's not practical to write that number out most of the time. So we usually use scientific notation. And we say it's about 6.02 or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items or objects. That's how many things there are in a mole. That's a very large number. Now, just to illustrate this, if we had that many grains of rice, and you all know that grains of rice are very, very small, that would be enough to fill all the land area in the whole world to a depth of 250 feet. That is a lot of rice. That's more rice than has been grown since the beginning of, of uh, human history, as far as we know. Uh, if you had about that number of hockey pucks, that would have about the same mass as the moon. On the same scale, that many molecules of water, it's a very small amount. In fact, it's about 18 milliliters, or about six tenths of an ounce of water. So, by thinking about this, we can see how large this number is. By the way, this number is 602 sextillion, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We call this Avogadro's number, sometimes uh, because it is named after Amadeo Avogadro, the scientist who did some of the work that helped us to discover that number. This also helps us to see that Avogadro's number represents atoms molecules that are exceedingly tiny. It is uh, unimaginably small to think about how, how, how small atoms and molecules are. Very, very small objects. That's why we need such a big number to talk about them. Now, when we describe a mole, if we talk about one mole of carbon, that is specifically referring to Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. If we talk about a mole of water, well, water doesn't appear in atoms. Its unit is called a molecule. So that would be referring to Avogadro's number of molecules of water. If we say one mole of sodium chloride, well, the, the unit that we use for sodium chloride is not called a molecule. Since it's an ionic compound, we call it a formula unit. So that would be Avogadro's number of sodium chloride formula units. Uh, one mole of bromine, Br2, that would be that many molecules of bromine. If we have ions, we can talk about a mole of ions as well. That just means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd sodium ions. We can use a mole to talk about pretty much anything. A mole of anything really just refers to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd fundamental units of whatever that substance happens to be, whether it's a, an atom or a molecule or an ion or a formula unit, whatever it happens to be, a mole is just 602 sextillion of those objects. Now, we can work problems with this as well. Here's a, here's a nice example of that. Let's say we have 0 0.380 moles of carbon dioxide, and we want to figure out how many molecules of carbon dioxide we're dealing with. Well, we work this problem just like we have before in the introductory unit. We learned about dimensional analysis. And if we're converting from moles to molecules, well, you want to put moles on the bottom because whatever unit you start with needs to go on the opposite side of the conversion factor. And then since we're converting to molecules, that's going to go on top. And we've just learned that one mole is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of pretty much any, uh, any compound there. So we can cancel moles. And on our calculator, you're going to take 0 0.380 times Avogadro's number. And when you key that in, you get the answer 2.29 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide. 
and we can go in the other direction as well. If we have a question that says uh, a sample of 1.02 times 10 to the 24th ions of calcium, 2 plus, is equivalent to how many moles? We work the problem pretty much the same way, except we write down what's given to us here. This time it's 1.02 times 10 to the 24th ions of calcium. And this time we're converting it to moles. So at the end we're gonna have moles. And our conversion factor this time, ions will go on the bottom and moles will go on the top. And we know that one mole is equivalent to Avogadro's number of ions. So we can cancel ions. And this time we're going to divide. We take 1.02 times 10 to the 24th and divide that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And when you key that in, you should get an answer of, of about 1.69 moles of calcium. Now, just as a reminder, uh, I'm trying to be consistent with my significant figures. My question in both of these examples actually had three significant figures. So my answer should have three significant figures as well. Try to be consistent with that. Now, another way to talk about a mole is with the mass. What is the mass of a mole? You know, it's honestly not very practical to counting atoms and molecules. No one's ever going to sit down and start counting atoms. Take a look at a table. Let's count, you know, one, two, three. It would be impossible, basically uh, ridiculous to actually sit down and count atoms. The way that we count is by weighing or by finding the mass of a mole. The mass of one mole, if we look at any periodic table square, just look at the atomic mass right there and express that atomic mass in grams. And so as you can see down here, one mole of copper is gonna have a, a mass of 63.456 grams, as we can see. Uh, and that works for pretty much any element. One mole is equal to its atomic mass expressed in grams. And if we have a compound, it works the same way, except you just have to add up its individual atomic masses. So if we have salt, sodium chloride, and you want to find out what's the mass of one mole of salt, well, you're just going to take the individual periodic table squares and add up the atomic masses. So sodium is about 22.99, and chlorine is about 35.45, so that gets us about 58.44 grams in one mole of sodium chloride. Just so you know, in this course, I will try to, uh, to round these off to the nearest hundredths place. That's a good uh, habit to, to get into. Don't round off too much. Uh, try to, uh, to get you enough significant figures in there so that it doesn't uh, adversely affect your answer whenever you do calculations with this. So that's why I, I, I try to use uh, two decimal places on these. Now, we call this the molar mass as in the mass of one mole of a substance. So we'd say the molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.44 grams, or the molar mass of copper is about 63.55 grams, molar mass. Now, we can also use molar mass and talk about it in a very, very tiny uh, aspect and call that the formula mass if we're talking about ionic compounds. So in the case of aluminum oxide, we just look at the periodic table and since we have two aluminum atoms, we multiply that by the 26.98 atomic mass. And that gets us about 53.96. And we have three oxygens at about 16.00 atomic mass units apiece to get us 48. And when you add that together, you get 101.96 atomic mass units. That's the formula mass of that. Now, the molar mass of that is 101.96 grams. Molar mass is always just expressed in grams. We can do the same thing for uh, magnesium nitrate in this, in this case here. We have one magnesium at about 24.31, so we have that. We have two nitrogens at about 14.01 apiece, so that's 28.02. We have six oxygens, three times two is six, at about 16.00 apiece to get us 96. So when you add that up, that's 148.33 atomic mass units. If the question were, what's the molar mass of this? 
it would just be 148.33 grams. The molar mass is always in grams. Now we can do the same thing for molecular compounds, except on the microscopic or submicroscopic scale, we'd call that molecular mass. So water, probably that's the most common one that we think of when we say a molecular compound. We have two of these at 1.008 a piece. I'm trying to use four sig figs there to make it 2.016. And then we have one uh, oxygen atom at about 16. So you have 16 there. Add it up, it's about 18.0 to approximately atomic mass units. The molar mass of water, 18.02 grams. And we could do that for other uh, molecular compounds. Here's sucrose, a normal table sugar. Uh, we have 12 carbons at 12.01, and that gets us a little over 144. We have 22 hydrogens, and we have 11 oxygens. And when you add these together, we get that the molecular mass of sucrose is about 342.30 atomic mass units. And of course, the molar mass of that, the mass of one mole of this stuff, would be 342.30 grams. Hope you learned something here. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you did learn something, please hit that thumbs up button. I'm Jeremy Krug, and I hope to see you again on my channel.